Hello friends, in today's video we're going to be discussing three tips that we can actually utilize in order for us to enhance our entity framework performance. I am Muhammad and if you'd like to learn more about .NET, C Sharp, Azure and AWS, please make sure you subscribe and like this video. So now let's get started. So what I have here is I have a sample .NET Web API application. It contains two controllers, which is going to be the achievement and drivers controller. It's using a SQLite database, but basically these tips you can utilize with any types of database. And we have the repository pattern implemented inside of it. So if we take a look at the API, what we can see here is we can see the API has two uh, controllers, the achievements and the drivers. If we take a look at the get driver achievement, try it out, execute, we can see we're able to get the driver's information. And if I want to get a driver by ID, we can take this out, put a driver by ID, get, try it out, provide the ID and execute. We'll able to get this information. So we can see here I have all of the information there directly available into my API. So what we're going to be doing today is let me go back to the source code and let me stop my application. What I want to do here is I want to implement some entity framework enhancements into my repositories. So if we take a look here, as you can see here, I'm implementing the unit framework repository pattern. And basically what I want to do is I want to enhance my entity framework queries in order for me to enhance my application performance. So right now in my application, I only have a single user. So let's see if I'm going to include, for example, create like few drivers. So I'm just going to create random drivers here. So I'm just going to put string one, one, and just execute this few times. So we'll have like maybe, I don't know, 20 to 30 drivers. So now we can see here, all of them has been added. And now if I put get all, we should be able to see that I have a lot of drivers available. So we can see here, I have a large list of drivers. All of them have the same name. That's fine. But basically I have now a large set of drivers available for me. So now what I want to do is I want to actually enhance my get all functionality. So currently, if I take a look at my get all query, we can see here that all I'm doing is I'm getting the entity that I have, I'm setting the condition, and then based on that, I'm sorting them out by the date that they have been added, and I'm returning the list as async. But this is not really optimal, because what I'm doing here, I'm only getting the information for an API. I don't really need the entity framework to keep a track of this object. So if we know entity framework by default, what it does, it's it keep a track of the state that's actually returning back from the database. So inside its memory, what it's doing, it's keeping track that it just returned for me a list of all of the drivers that currently have and basically it keeps it in the memory in order for it whenever I try to do any updates or any delete whatever it is it will be directly able to retrieve that state of the object and based on that it will be able to facilitate that and directly push it back to the database but in my case right now I'm dealing with an API and what I'm doing is I'm just simply extracting information for my consumer so any consumer that I want they will be able to utilize this API in order for them to get this information so I don't really need to entity framework to keep track of all of this data so what I need to do here in order for me to enhance this is utilized to as no tracking. So the as no tracking mean here, I'm basically telling entity framework that whatever state that you are currently utilizing in order for you to keep track of those objects, do not keep it. Do not track any state, do not keep any state. All you need to do is just execute the query and return it back to me. You don't have to worry about any types of state management. And this will basically accelerate entity framework implementation and it will be very, util very useful for any types of large sets of data that I'm actually dealing with. And it will be better performance on my server or whatever I'm hosting my application. So that's the first thing. The as no tracking, it will allow my application to basically have a detached state or basically no state at all for any of the objects that my database will return. So for tip number two, we're going to be taking a look at lazy loading and eager loading. So if we take a look at get all drivers, which basically it is this endpoint here, what we're doing is I'm basically getting all of my drivers. But what happened if I want to actually get the drivers and their achievement as well? If I want to do this, what I can do, I can put a for each and within this for each, I can loop through the drivers. So this needs to be an S, I forgot the S here. And basically here is going to be a driver. And basically for every driver, I need to get, for example, say var achievement equal driver dot achievement and basically this achievement that I have I can actually utilize it in my whatever response that I need to get so what I'm doing here is I'm doing something called lazy loading this will not work with the as no tracking so we need to make sure that if I'm going to use this I don't need to have this here so let me remove this but Within the lazy loading, what I'm doing here is basically I'm telling entity framework because don't let us not forget if I'm not using as no tracking, entity framework will keep state of the object. So in this case here, if I put doing a for loop and I'm using lazy loading, every time I'm looping through, what entity framework is doing is actually it's doing a call to the database. It is extracting the achievements for every single driver and then it will return it for me. So in let's say in this case, I have 20 drivers and this means if I'm going to do it this way, I have almost 20 calls to the database on top of the original call to get 
all drivers. So that's 21 calls to the database in order for me to get the information using lazy loading. Don't get me wrong, lazy loading has its right time and the right place to be utilized, but it's not everywhere that we need to use it. So in order for me to avoid these 20 calls, and if I know from a requirement point of view that I'm going to be utilizing this information, what I can do inside my repository here or inside my query is I can use the following. I can say dot include, and I can actually include the object that I want. And in this case, it's going to be the achievements. And basically when I do this, what I'm doing here, I'm doing something, doing something called what I'm doing here. I'm doing something called eager loading, which means that from the first call of my database, which is here, when I'm doing the get all, I'm actually directly doing an eager loading in order for me to extract the information from the database at the same time. I'm not waiting for my query to be loaded here in order for me to do the calls. So instead of having 21 calls here, what I'm having is a single call. Basically, I'm going to have zero calls and here I only have one call. And basically this allows me to optimize my query and be able to get the response as fast as I can from my database without actually having a lot of round trips between my API and my database in order for me to get the information. And for my last point that I would like to mention here is regarding bulk update. So now let's say if, if we go back to the repository and under the update, what I want to do is, for example, I want to update a list, a large list of users or drivers. So I'm going to take this query that I have and instead of updating a single driver, what I can do if I have, for example, a list of drivers and basically what I want to do is I want to get all of the drivers rather than a single one. And then basically what I want to do is I want to do a for each on all of the drivers. And then here I'm going to call the driver. So I'm just going to update the driver dot first name, for example, or driver number. I'm going to all change it to, let's say, a certain number, which is one. So let's say this is the update I want to do for any reason. I want to update all of the drivers number to one. So in this case here, what ha what's happening? I'm getting the 20 drivers. And once I get the 20 drivers, I'm executing 20 update against my database. So here, this update is executing 20 times. So what I'm doing here, I'm doing 21 calls to the database in order for me to update this bulk sets of users. There should be a better way to do that. So what's the way to do that? Is utilizing something called bulk update. What I need to do is I need to utilize something called, which is built in newly to AF7, which is going to be the DB set. And in order for me to do this, I'm going to utilize a new feature, which has been added added to EF7 and this is going to be the execute update. So what I can do here is I can put underscore DB set to execute update. I can make it async or not. So let's make it async and I can make it here as an await. And then what I can do here put x, x dot set property and then I can define which property that I want to update. And I can use, for example, here, let's say property. So it's P, I can say P dot P dot, let's say drivers number. I can say P dot, so P dot driver number. Then I need to put again the property. And it's going to be the new value. So I can put P dot driver number, I don't know, plus 20 or something like that. So what's happening here is basically, let's make this on a single line so we can actually see it all in action. So what I'm doing here is I'm executing something called execute update async, which is a bulk batch implementation from entity framework. And basically what I'm telling it that it needs to have a single property. I'm specifying which driver, which field inside my entity it is. In this case, it's going to be driver number. And then I'm then giving it the new value that it needs to produce. So I'm taking the old value and I'm adding 20 to it, or even I can remove this and specify like 10 or whatever it is. And it will be saving it. In this case, it was one. So it will update everything to one. Basically, within these lines of code here, I'm actually able to execute all of the bulk updates rather than having me trying to do a for loop on every single one of these items in order for me to execute the update. So instead of having 21 calls to the database, I'm having two calls, once to get the list and the second one, is, which is going to be to do the bulk updates. So this has been a quick video just to introduce those tips regarding Entity Framework. If you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. If you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.